So on this channel, I'm always doing a lot of these Pandora box reviews. There are so many new ways to play old school retro games. And Pandora box is an, let's say, a wide understanding of Pandora boxes, arcade machines, plug and play devices, and even retro game consoles. But in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Pandora box version number three. It's a dual screen arcade machine. It comes packed up very well. And there's always the question, does it arrive very safely? And I can tell you, don't be afraid of this, simply because the packaging itself is very well. And I don't have big problems in boxing or with transport. All right, so we're getting a lot of peripherals with these Pandora boxes, depends a little bit what kind of product you're buying. But most of the time it comes with the VGA, HDMI, some spare buttons and power supply. I did a lot of these dual screen Pandora box arcade machines and this is version number three. There did some changes and I'm very curious what are we going to get. The first thing that I think is a really big problem with these machines, they are not cheap, but most of the time they are coming pre-installed, sometimes with a little problem like this. But at the end, some of these are just plug and play and you can just enjoy some retro arcade games. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and become one of this awesome Wicked family slash community. So, but first let's start with the light up feature. If you're removing the front little Pandora box marquee, you can see there's an LED strip over here. And the effect of it, it's an RGB LED strip and it gives a very nice effect, even when it's dark. So I think it's a very cool addition to this version 3 dual arcade machine. And at the side we're finding this volume control and on and off switch combination that is brand new to this model. And in this part I just want to talk about the Pandora box number 6, the official one. Because there are some quite some little things they changed out and not always for the better. So first of all they changed this out, this is more like an extension cable, I personally never seen it before. Um, very strange because the original cable is, so cable tree is pretty long. Right, they are still using this 3 watt smart, very tiny loudspeaker, but I'm not a big fan of it. I personally prefer the 5 watt version. If you can see it over here, you can see there are some new connections and they even use a new cooling fan. Alright, so let's open it up from the other side so I can show you some more things. But there are some little things going on on this main board that I really wanted to show you. Alright, so as you can see over here, this is the cable. It's totally different like the original one. But okay, here comes the thing I wanted to show you. Can you see this over here? Here you can see the two cables for the screen and two for powering on the screen. But here comes the problem if you want to upgrade it in the future. Because if you look at the original main board, first of all, the little fan is different, but there is no way of using the screens. Or you can order a new main board in the future, or you're just basically stuck with this thing. And even a replacement board is hard to find. All right, so let's put this thing back together and let's talk about the control panel because a lot of things we can say about it. The funny thing is with these joysticks, they are not the best I have felt, but most of the time it's dependent with what kind of buttons and joystick we're going to get with these Pandora boxes. But I must say with this version, they are not bad at all. They're just this Chinese clicky button, but an overall not bad at all. Alright, so the layout itself, we're having the A, B, C, D, A and F button. So for all the games we have for Pandora Box is just fine. We have a pause start over there. And if you look at the player 2 and go into the player 1, they're exactly the same. So when looking at the manual, there's not a lot of information. It's just a basic information what you're going to get, by the way, with every single Pandora Box. But we always have this piece of paper that says certificate. Yeah, because we have an original Pandora Box now. But there's also something else that I wanted to show you. There's a little piece of paper because here it comes. There are no games included on this main board. You need to add them yourself. So keep that in mind. But there was something else that I noticed. When removing this screen protector, you can see there's still something on the screen itself. You can just basically remove it. But if you look around this device, you can see the plastic protection is simply on every part. Thinking, okay, fine there is a lot of plastic on for protecting it that is very well but they are not always going to get off very easily and most important i think it's rather better to remove or screw some parts off then you can remove the plastic safely and very well from the side it was not a big problem you can see over here you can remove it so but for now i'm just going to stay 
yeah, let it stay on simply because I wanted to stay it protected. But before we go into power on the Pandora box, there's something I really want to point out. This version number three has this volume control slash combination of on and off switch. And I find it pretty damn annoying. And the first reason is very simple. The on and off switch is very sensitive. So if you want to have, let's say, a very low volume and you put it just on the edge, it goes out. So that's something I noticed a lot. Also, there is always a small delay in the volume control and the Pandora box. So adjusting it in basically every single game is always a freaking nightmare. So I will give you a little example of what I mean with the delay that is with the games. And it's pretty annoying to adjust to the correct volume. And this is also a little problem with the Pandora box. You will notice when playing some different games that there's quite some difference in sound level, so every time you need to adjust it. So the displays are 10 inch, are pretty common and used in many of these arcade machines. Have a pixel of 1280 by 720 and are not an EPS screen, but got a good view angle. All right, so let's take a close look at the menu. I'm going to give an explanation how it works. Right when pressing up and down, you can move to the next game. And when pressing left and right, you can go to the next page. Right pressing the start button, you can see we have in categorized and we have an alphabetic order. Here you can very easily search through your games and it works like a charm. Right, and as you can see, we are ready. Went through the M, you can go back and let's say, let's choose shooting and you can get all the shoot em up games. All right, so for the people new to the Pandora box scene, uh, let's do a little bit of a view of the setting menu. Okay, here you can see in the EO testing, here you can check if everything is working, if you're having any problems. All right, the custom buttons, this is a little bit of a pros and a con because you can map the buttons as you wish, but it is only for basically every single freaking game. So you cannot say I want to have the PlayStation on a different custom button setting. All right, I'm going to put the quality optimization off. There's a little bit of filtering. I don't like it. Just want to have the real deal. There is no screen adjustment. Game settings, I'm going to show you here. You can adjust the difficulty in lives if you want to. Bookkeeping is when you want to put it in an arcade machine. So yeah, inside speaker is off. I just basically, oh man, I forgot to put it on. Nevertheless, I'm going to reboot it again and uh, put it on. Alright, so but let's focus on the support and the games and what are we going to get. So first thing, keep in mind, there are no games installed on the USB drive. You can upgrade the USB drive to 64 gigabytes, nothing bigger, or this is what I understand of the factory. If you look at the support, we are having only three platforms. We are having the MAME, Neo Geo and PlayStation 1. So but let's focus on the MAME and Neo Geo first. So the MAME itself it's a pretty decent emulation, but it still have the issues with some games that I'm missing out sound effects or the music sounds a little bit differently. So that is one problem. And the second problem is that sometimes you have a little bit notable of screen tearing in. That depends a little bit what kind of game you're playing. It's not, for example, with the game you're seeing now, but sometimes you will notice it. So let's bring us to the PlayStation 1 part because it's supported by Pandora box number six. But it is flawed in many ways. For example, you can't save games. And with the Tekken series, this is an issue because your unlockables cannot be saved. So you always need to unlock the checkers every single time you play the game. Also, we having the rumble function problem. Some games will crash. So for example, rival schools that I know of, they will crash. Otherwise, you need to shut down the rumble function in the settings of the game. But here comes the problem with the saving part. You can't save. So that is a problem. And every time you need to boot up the game, you need to shut off the rumble function, which cause we can't save. That is a little bit of a big negative thing about the PlayStation emulation on this device. All right, so let's continue with some gameplay and show you how the games are running on the Pandora box number six.
Alright, so this is what you're going to get with the Pandora box twin screen version number 3. So it's a thick acrylic casing, it's very sturdy and I really like it. So if you look at the volume control, that is a new addition to this cabinet. The idea behind it is pretty cool, but how it works is not very well with the on and off switch in combination with the volume control. I personally rather see two separate things or a volume control and an on and off switch. So if you look at the Pandora Box 6, it's flawed in many ways and it didn't improve it. Still the PlayStation 1 was a big issue with these save functions and all the other things that is going on with it. And there are way better things out there. But there's also a big issue with upgrading in the future. If you want to upgrade it with a different box, you need to buy this mainboard that supports also the displays. So this is going to be an issue. Maybe somebody knows how to do this upgrade without, let's say, the main board that has the outputs that you can buy in separate PCB board for it. But nevertheless, this is what you're going to get. It's pretty good quality, but it is not cheap.